Morning world, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. It's the 1st of July 2014. The start of the second half of the year. Um, I'm looking at basically a weird one this morning. I'm looking at uncertainty. I'd like to take you back to the days of about 90 years ago, 80 years ago. A chap called Schrodinger. He had this idea of putting a cat in a box with a poison capsule and sealing the box and then wondering if the cat was still alive. And his, his principle was that you didn't know if a cat had been poisoned or was still alive unless you opened the box. It was uncertainty. Similarly, at the same time, Heisinger's uncertainty principle. It works quite simply. He says, whenever you watch something or observe something, it behaves the way you expect it to. But how do you know what it's up to when you're not watching it? How do you know that that book doesn't turn into a, a, a flock of flying geese when you're not watching it, only to turn back into a book the second you pay it attention again? Of course, that's a ridiculous um, example, but nevertheless, um, it's particle wave stuff. Things behave as particles when you observe them, when you pay them valence, when you engage with them. But as soon as you're not engaging with them, they delete, they go into wave form and you never know quite what they're up to. It is this uncertainty principle that in many ways underpins the nature of astrology because astrology in itself is uncertain. There are always evolving and changing patterns going on. For example, the planet Venus. Over the weekend, I had the discussion with quite a few separate astrologers and astronomers about the effects of the planet Venus. You see, I, in my years, have dealt with thousands and thousands and thousands of people. I've done tens of thousands of astrological readings in the last 30 years. And it's common for me to see how... Um, a, a Mercury retrograde in the sky, of a transiting Mercury retrograde, absolutely hammers people. It's pretty easy to, to dictate, and many of you will be aware of the influence of Mercury retrograde. Now, Mercury is a very small planet, very small indeed, and it's very close to the sun, so we hardly see it. Therefore, one would imagine that its influences would be more negligible than it is, yet it does have a very significant effect. However, Venus, much closer to the Earth, much more visible, 10 times brighter than Mercury, 10 times more visible in terms of length in the sky, but yet, I've yet to meet anyone who can say to me, yes, I felt that Venus transit. And despite Venus being bigger, closer, brighter, more significant and probably more meaningful, I suspect that Venus does not have that much influence by transit as any of the other inner planets like Mercury or Mars does. Yet how can this be? Again, it's uncertain. We don't know. And it may well be. But quite simply, I have not been drawn towards people who are experiencing Venus transits. It may be that Venus doesn't work for me as well as it works for other people and that other people are actually out there really going through really strong experiences of having Venus transiting their horoscope. But if so, I've never met any of them. The reason I'm commenting on this today is because Mercury is standing still as we speak. It's at greatest elongation or it will be in a couple of days. Indeed, it may well be visible over the coming few days in certain areas. I'll dig that one out and look you up and let you know in the next day or so. And it's standing still exactly on top of my Venus. So which is why I've got an interest in Venus at the moment. But I don't get it. A, a Venus works in one's horoscope, the same as Chiron, definitely. But when it comes to transits, for some reason, Venus doesn't seem to have the same influence as Mercury and Mars. How can this be? Why should it be? It upsets the natural rhythm of astrological flow and it makes me question as to whether astrologers so far have actually established the right pattern. More on this one later. Bye.